Ah, uh, what a beautiful August morning. Can you even imagine a more idyllic summer scene? Oh dear God, it's you. It's August. No. It's still summer. Well, it's just, it's not time yet. What the? This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It's August, and you know what that means. Halloween. <laughs> I get the fever at the very beginning of August every single year, and I can't escape it. But I do have to admit that I am still solidly in a summer mood right now. The past couple of years, I have become a bit of a summer girly. <sighs> what can I say? I enjoy not having to wear shoes outside, and I like to bask in the evening warmth while sitting on my driveway like a little snake. And what says summer more than flowers? I've already turned flowers into fairies on this channel, and honestly, um... It didn't go well. I feel like I am in need of a little bit of redemption whenever it comes to flowers. So let's give flowers another shot, and this time with a more seasonally appropriate theme. What do you mean more seasonally appropriate? It's August. It's still summer. Yes, here's something. I wanted to go for rarer flowers this time, but I put roses on the list, so that didn't really happen. But I did get some less stereotypical flowers in there. In fact, one of them isn't even technically a flower. Um, just pretend that it is. The ones that I did end up going for are the sunflower, the water lily, the rose, and the belladonna, aka deadly nightshade. And again, I don't think that it's a flower. I think it qualifies more as a plant, but it is a flowering plant. So, since my brain relies far too heavily on weaving together interconnected concepts for these videos, I also wanted to give these witches familiars. I thought a fun way to do that was to use the most popular pollinators, or at least the ones that I thought were interesting. So I'm going to be pairing them together with bees, hummingbirds, butterflies, and bats. So again, because of the whole interconnected concepts thing, I also align each of these witches with a different one of the four elements, just to give myself something else to go on, because I have found recently, whenever I'm dealing with just one concept, it's a little bit difficult to weave together a character design that's like substantial. So on that note, all of my inspo boards are obviously very color coordinated. They're sort of corresponding to the mood and general personality of the four elements with a couple of subversions here and there. And obviously they're very heavy on the imagery of the different flowers that I'm using as well as their respective familiars. So Belladonna is very dark and gothy. Rose is more romantic. Sunflower is very sunshiny and wholesome. And the water lily is a little bit more calm and reserved. So our base concepts are a little bit stereotypical, but I'm gonna do some character work along the way to try to add depth to these designs and make them feel like a true coven and like a true little friend group. So you guys know the drill. There's a lot of idea salad floating around in my brain right now. So first step, thumbnails. As always with thumbnails, I'm really trying to lay out the general silhouette, color palette, and primary shapes for the design. I'm also trying to lay out things like distinctive clothing styles for each of the characters since I want this to be kind of a coordinating coven. And I'm trying to work in visual references like their flowers, elements, familiars, and primary magical skills. I kind of divided the magical skills into kitchen witch potions and alchemy, animal control, and necromancy for these characters. Finally, whenever I'm doing coordinating designs, I always want to make those designs actually look good together. So that's the final thing that I'm watching out for with these thumbnails, trying to make character designs that look good individually, but also look good as a group and look like they're supposed to be together as a group. And if you want a dedicated place to post your own beautiful character designs, you need a portfolio. And you can easily build one with this video's sponsor, Squarespace. As a non-graphic designer, previous website building experiences have been a little confusing. But Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that actually set you up for success. So then you can just focus on the important stuff like your actual portfolio. You can effortlessly drop in full galleries of your work with features like automatic image scaling, which scale and position your pieces in a great format as soon as you upload them. And then you can focus on polishing the personal branding of your site with icons, text, colors, and whatever website pages you might need. And you can even add brand relevant media with audio, video, and image blogs. And to connect more with your audience, you can use social blocks to link your various social media accounts to your Squarespace site and display recent social media posts on your site. And whether you're running a side hustle or a full business, Squarespace offers an e-commerce platform with all the selling features that you could possibly need. And they also offer extensive analytics for every aspect of your website so that you can keep track of what your audience is interested in and how to connect more to them. So if you need a portfolio to showcase your beautiful character designs or just a website in general, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. As always, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. 
Now let's get started. The first one that I worked on was Water Lily because as you could probably see, it was the one that was giving me the most trouble in the thumbnail stage. This is one of those character designs where I had a really clear image of my head, but whenever it came to actually getting that down on a white piece of paper, it just wasn't quite translating immediately. So it definitely took some tweaking and some figuring out. Thankfully, I more or less figured most stuff out in the thumbnail stage, but I was still worried about how it would come out in the final illustration. So I decided to tackle this one first. And wow, doing the hard one first, that is yet another piece of character development for me and this channel. So the big thing that made this character difficult was I wanted to give them more of a mask presentation. And as many of you know, I tremendously struggle with drawing and designing masculine characters. I don't know why. We're working on it. But I wanted to translate the otherwise quite feminine witchy aesthetics that I'm used to seeing into a slightly more masculine look and something that would fit for more of a reserved water-based character. I also kind of designed these characters in dyads, which is a term that is largely relevant to Star Wars, and I'm sorry for using it here, but it just makes sense to me, where the elements of sun and moon corresponding to air and fire are kind of linked together, and then the elements of water and earth corresponding to this character and Rose are linked together. And since I'm giving Rose more of a feminine edge, I wanted to give Water Lily more of a masculine edge to oppose these characters in a similarly opposite way. And I achieved this through the woodsiest, most Water Lily garment that I could possibly think of, cute little high-waisted cuffed shorts, a staple of any woodsy wardrobe, including my own. But more importantly, the highlight of this ensemble is a lily pad themed capelet that also has water lilies kind of sprouting out out of the shoulders and also forming a collar, as well as a water lily themed witch hat with a very interesting design. I, I don't know if I was entirely able to pull it off, but I sure tried. From there, I kind of tied everything together with some very high boots. I imagine these boots are similar to the fishing boots that you would wear that are really high that keep your jeans from getting all wet, as well as blue hair and blue sleeves with little white ruffles on them to reference again water. To add on a little bit from the original thumbnail, I also threw in some extra pouches and flasks for alchemy as well as some books, a teacup holster, and some writing instruments. And since every witch needs a broomstick or a staff, I thought that it would be really funny and goofy if I gave them a mop. The mop has a couple of motifs that are loosely inspired by a water lily, but it is still just a mop nonetheless. I thought it would be funny and kind of endearing. Now it's just late at night and I can't tell if it is or not. Finally, of course, they have their hummingbird pollination familiar. And I mostly chose the hummingbird because I thought the color palette would match well with the water lily, which it does, but the reasoning doesn't go a whole lot deeper than that. <laughs> Deep, get it, little water joke. Speaking of color palette, I mostly stuck to the color palette of common water lilies, but I also wanted to add some references to water in there, which was actually a bit of a challenge. I wanted this to be a water themed character, but it, since it's water lilies, it's more of a fresh water pond swamp water themed character. So the color that's the most evocative of water, blue, didn't exactly make me think of those locations. So I mostly focused on the coloration of lily pads to solidify this character in more of a swampy environment and added some deeper blues here and there as more of an accent color. I think it also helps to reference this character's magical focus on potion abilities because, you know, liquids. In terms of personality, I think this character would be pretty thoughtful and calm, sort of a go with the flow personality, but also having more of a philosophical, poetic, and dramatic side. It would be more of a scientific brain focusing on biology and entomology academically, but then in their free time they would have an interest in poetry and more artistic and linguistic academic pursuits. This will come back later and how they kind of play off Belladonna because I picture Belladonna as also being more of an academic personality, but specializing in the arts and linguistic side of things while having a more private interest in traditional biology and science. Can you tell that this is me creating artificial intrigue in characters by giving them opposing but complementary traits? Anyways, I think this would create a fun dynamic between these two characters because they would have a lot in common and a lot to teach each other from having shared academic interests. They would definitely be a bit of a duo when creating spells or potions, but also just socially, I think that they would hang out and Belladonna would help Alwyn with their poetry. That's what I'm deciding their name is. Their name is Alwyn, by the way. And then Alwyn would help Belladonna develop different potions and alchemical spells. And if you're wondering what the role of this group is as a whole, uh, like many of my characters, they're just sort of forest guardian types. I made moth witches at the exact same time last year, and I imagine that they run in kind of similar circles. They're just generally tasked with the protection of nature, but then I think this group in particular might also take it upon themselves to exact vengeance on anyone who is destroying nature. So they're a little darker, a little bit more vindictive, but for an arguably good cause. Next up is Belladonna, and her design was probably my favorite design to work on in the end. I just obviously kind of have a thing for designing misunderstanding 
understood dark villain characters, but also, you know, who doesn't? So Belladonna also is known by the name Deadly Nightshade, and as many of you I'm sure know, is a plant that is deadly poisonous to humans. Again, although while not strictly a flower, it is a flowering plant, and I have to say the flowers are pretty beautiful. And the berries also grow off of this plant and a formation of leaves that look a little bit like a star, which is another reason why I wanted to give it a shot. The shapes were just screaming, turn me into a witch character, and obviously I had to oblige. So for the main garment part of these designs, I really wanted to focus on layering and kind of heavy winter clothing because it is so synonymous with like witchy archetypes. So I wanted to give most of them some kind of capelet or cape or poncho. So I came up with a dress for Belladonna that had this wide cowl neck on top with a celestial motif, puff sleeves, a long bat-like cape coming off the back, and a mermaid skirt that also has a bat motif on the bottom. Similarly, I also designed a spindly little witch hat for her and adorned the dress all over with different leaves and berries and flowers from the nightshade plant, as well as other witchy motifs like lacing, bones on the rib cage and on the boots, those bones specifically being a reference to her necromancy powers, ruffles, and actual lace trim. I finished off her design with a staff that I would imagine helps her to summon the souls of the dead to use in her necromancy rituals, as well as some deadly nightshade potions on her belt and some matching spell books. Overall, I absolutely love how this design came out, especially the color palette. There's just something very satisfying about all of the different shades of purple and indigo and green playing together, especially against her warm skin tone. It's just very satisfying from a color palette perspective. Anyways, this is probably my favorite design from the video. It's giving Victorian romantic period, and I feel like this would be such a cute witch costume for someone to actually make and to actually exist. Yes, cosplayers out there, I am talking to you. Anyways, in terms of personality, I feel like she would be bookish and intelligent, but have more of a leadership role in the group, more of an assertive, dominant personality, but, but erring on that quieter, more logical side. And I also feel like she would have a really dark sense of humor. I think she would insert a lot of out-of-pocket dark comedy into the group, especially like contrasted against the other members who have very wholesome, light personalities. Like I said, she would find a lot of camaraderie with Alwyn because Alwyn would help her to begin mastering her spells, especially those relating to biology and necromancy. And I think her more altruistic focuses with necromancy would be relating to deforestation and like repopulating broken ecosystems with the animals that used to live there, albeit dead versions of them. You know, temporarily until places can be restored. But I think that a lot of her necromancy practices would just be out of vengeance. I think she would haunt people who harm the forest with spooky dead animals just to torment them. And in the most extreme cases, I think that she would revive people who have done the environment harm after they die and basically make them repay their debt to the forest with long undead community service. Do the higher ups know she's doing this? Is this okay? No. <laughs> in this world, using necromancy in this way is highly frowned upon and her friends also don't like her doing this, so they don't really know about that, which I'm sure could create a little bit of tension within the coven if people ever found out about it. Potential plot point for the story that will never exist, probably. For how she relates to the other characters, I feel like she and Sunflower are polar opposites, but in like a complimentary way. They get along really well, she's very protective of Sunflower, and she genuinely likes the positive attitude that Sunflower brings. It's like refreshing to her, juxtaposed against her stiff, unwavering pessimism. As for her and Rose, I feel like they would really butt heads a lot because they're both sort of like love of nature centered characters, but they communicate their love of nature in very different ways. And I think that Rose would be really against the necromancy stuff because Rose is all about life and specifically like live plants and animals. So bringing a creature back after its natural life has ended, I think would be strongly against her beliefs. So that would be like a primary area of tension if she found out about all of the necromancy stuff. You might be wondering how her air abilities fit into all of this, and I generally think that she would be able to control air and weather patterns in the forest. You know, control fog and rain and air temperature. Just generally help regulate the environment and keep all of the plants and wildlife safe, especially during particularly extreme seasons of weather or temperature. And her soul staff's intended use is to kind of guide stray souls of animals and wildlife into the afterlife but she tends to abuse it and bring them back to 
who life for her own vengeful activities. You know, she means well, and I love a character who's a little bit morally gray, just sort of inserted into the good guy group of characters, don't you? Next up is Sunflower, and I just really enjoyed working on this one. Of course, this design is based around the idea of sunflowers, bees as pollinators, and also the fire element, specifically relating to the sun and stars. So with all the bright imagery, I wanted to create a bubbly, wholesome character, and I pretty sure that I succeeded in doing just that. Since she's the antithesis to Nightshade, I wanted to give her a similar dress and silhouette, but in a bright sunshine theme. I gave her a similar cowl neck with a celestial design on it and puff sleeves, but this time with a skirt that is long and flowing and full, complete with a little celestial apron because I decided that this witch's powers would be that of baking and kitchen witchery. I thought it would be really fitting with the fire theme, but also fitting with a sunshine theme because instead of being more of a destructive fire, it's more of a creative healing fire because I also think that this witch would have food with healing abilities. You know, that famous healing factor of pie that we all know and love. So to bring out the kitchen witch magic focus in her design, I gave her a bunch of different cooking accessories hanging from her belt like flour, a rolling pin, salt and pepper, some herbs, and also some oven mitts on her hands, which I theorize would function a little bit like Elsa's gloves from Frozen, kind of preventing her from using her powers whenever she doesn't intend. I figure she kind of has flame abilities, but the abilities can help like heal wounds and different ailments whenever they're directed in a certain way. They can also be used to bake delicious pies and other yummy treats, but it can get a little unwieldy if left unchecked. So oven mitts are the obvious fashion accessory to keep your fire powers from destroying your entire home. Maybe a little cliche, but I think that her powers would be kind of regulated through control of her emotions. So not necessarily suppression of them, but awareness of them and just generally being very emotionally mature and in tune with herself. This awareness and control would allow her to use her powers, but also make her the voice of reason and kind of the glue in the group. But I think she would be really good at mediating arguments and getting people together to actually socialize, even when their personalities don't necessarily click. On the flip side of that, her optimism and willingness to see an argument from all sides might make her a little naive and a little oblivious to why an argument made someone so upset in the first place. I also figure that given her familiar as a bee, it would give her access to the world's best sweeteners for her pies. You know that friend who can just bake really well and like brings you muffins and stuff like that? She would be that, but like times a thousand. You know, cause they'd be like healing muffins. Anyways, to bring in some bee motifs, I gave her some little bee wings coming out the back of her cowl to form a little capelet. And both the bee and fire motifs also come out in the coloration of her dress with different stripes of brown and orange and yellow and white. I further accessorized, of course, with a little sunflower witch hat that is giving strong cottage core energy. And of course, a broom because a witch needs a broom and hers is a little bit evocative of a sunflower. Like I said, in terms of personality, she's very bubbly and optimistic and extroverted. She is the epitome of food is my love language. I think she would be overall very artsy, not just in her culinary arts, but also dabble in like painting and aesthetic spells for her home and environment and general creative things. I surprisingly didn't really struggle with this one. I think that she came out super, super cute. Although I did struggle a little bit with the background. Uh, as you might have noticed, I've been adding backgrounds onto these just to add a little bit more zest and spice. Uh, my little sketchy character designs often turn into little mini illustrations. But after a little while of struggling, I ended up just adding a ray of sunshine behind her and that kind of solved my problem. Finally, we have another one of my favorites, the rose design. Now, initially this design was really difficult to pin down, mostly because I was trying to choose a flower that I thought would fit in well with my other selections and I just couldn't really decide on one, which admittedly is one of the reasons why I ended up doing a rose. Call me literally the most basic, but I think roses are beautiful and they're my favorite flower, so I just wanted to do it, to be a little bit indulgent. Sue me. But this character is of course based around roses, the earth element, and her familiar is a butterfly. I kind of wanted to give this character hippie vibes because I feel like she would be very obsessive about protecting the earth and the flora and fauna on it. I think her personality and temperament would be a little bit like poison ivy. You know, very flirtatious and environmentally aware. And I think that her magical power of focus would be animal control and manipulation. And kind of specifically communication. I got really inspired by all these pictures of girls and foxes and wolves and deer that I kept seeing all over Pinterest. And this is lordly where a lot of the inspiration for this character came from. I kind of wanted to give her a link to the earth element in a non 
non-traditional way, especially since all of the other characters kind of have a non-traditional link to their element. So I thought an association with the earth and life in a broader sense would be more fitting for this character. And since humans are also beings on earth, I figured that she would also have a small amount of power to influence humans, and she would specifically specialize in some love spells. She would probably be one of the more morally gray members of the group, much like Belladonna, but her love spells would mostly exhibit light influence and mostly manipulation. Nothing too nefarious, but also things that are generally frowned upon. Since she is a rose and a bit more of a flirty romantic character, I wanted her outfit to reflect that, so I gave her a short romantic fluffy waistcoat dress with a leaf inspired overcoat over that with long draping sleeves and a little green corset over that. To bring in more of a rose motif, I gave her a pink hooded cloak with rose embellishments all over it and a black rose adorned witch hat and finished off the look with some black thigh high boots with little pink bows on them. Oh, actually, just kidding, I took the bows off. I basically decided to move that bow to the back of the witch hat to give more of like a butterfly shaped silhouette up there and make it a little bit more over the top romantic and feminine. I don't know if I absolutely love how it looks. It's kind of giving Genshin Impact character, which is a good thing most of the time, but then it's like sometimes we go a little bit too far. For the moment, it's a choice. I also gave her some little monarch butterfly familiars flying around, as well as a rose thorn staff with a little potion bottle hanging from it. I think her main powers would generally be based around connecting to the earth, so connecting to flora and fauna, and specifically being able to control and communicate with animals. This would be one of their main ways of hearing about danger and listening to what the animals need, and her ability to control animals would give her little helpers and also allow her to scout long distances since she's essentially able to warg into random creatures in the forest. Since she's earth-based and also rose-based, I thought that giving her a kind of hippie love of nature would be a fun direction to go in for this character. So she loves and defends nature kind of to a fault. She's a little hypocritical of Belladonna because she'll sometimes use mind control and love potions on people to get them to think more along the lines that she does. So she won't control people through manipulating them with undead animals, but she will control people through straightforwardly manipulating them. Her overall personality is very charismatic and flirty and free-spirited. Like Belladonna, she's a little edgier and lives in more of a moral gray area within this group, but unlike Belladonna, she sees herself as being a little bit more self-righteous. She doesn't normally see anything wrong with using her influential abilities on people and even those within the group. That being said, she does have a genuine love of nature and the best interest of the forest at heart and normally the best interest of her friends. She's just very headstrong in her beliefs and they can cloud her judgment from time to time. Nothing a little character development can't fix. Like I said, her earth powers give her a connection to pretty much all living things, which of course includes plants, but she also has a deep connection with gemstones and often uses different gemstones as a source of power in her spells and animal control. Of her dynamics within the group, she's definitely closest with Sunflower, but doesn't necessarily get along with Belladonna. She's friendly with Alwyn and they enjoy each other's company, but she can get a little bit overbearing, especially with Alwyn's more reserved personality. As you can probably tell, she and Sunflower are both the extroverted people in the group, so they enjoy doing very active, extroverted things together, like singing and dancing, going out drinking, maybe the occasional bit of gossip. And they're also the two more femme members of the group, so they enjoy a bit of shopping as well. As for the other Others, Alwyn and Sunflower tend to be the most emotionally mature and in tune members of the group, so they can actually talk about deep stuff together. Like I said, Belladonna and Sunflower are oddly complimentary and feel a lot like wholesome old friends who have known each other forever and their friendship has never changed. And Belladonna and Rose don't get along great, they disagree on a lot of things, but they do like to get together and complain about stuff. And they also occasionally enjoy sparring together and the more physical side of spellcasting. And with that, here are all the finished designs. I really really enjoyed working on these this week. I ended up really starting with the research and linking all the concepts together and working out personalities for these characters first. I don't normally have a ton of time to do that, but I think researching and conceptualizing and putting all of these personality traits and themes together ahead of time gave me way more to go off of during the design process. And I think it really contributed to designs that I'm very happy with. I think they turned out super cute. And I don't mean to play favorites, but especially Belladonna. She might actually become a character of mine that I use and draw as a comfort OC. In fact, several of these, if not all, might become comfort OCs, which is wild. I haven't designed characters that I intend to use in a long time. 
I feel bad saying that, but it's true. But friends, as you know, these are not so much my characters as they are our characters, so feel free to speculate wildly about backstories and names in the comments. Although I kind of did decide on names for these already, maybe you could help to expand the names or something like that, but I am pretty attached to the names that I already came up with, so. That. But if you need something else to comment, I am looking for other prompts and ideas for these videos, especially going into spooky season. So if you have any spooky prompt ideas for me, please let me know because I'm starting to get that spooky character design itch. Hello there, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. I most especially appreciate you watching till the end. That way you get to read all of the beautiful names of the people that I most especially appreciate. My patrons and my special loveys, my executive producers. Brian, Phoenix, Rose Draconi, Ira, Danny Tanga, Rose Kofrick, Freedom and Gus Gus, Francesca Sliwa, Small Creeper, Meg Litch, Cat, Dodo, Zyel S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. No.